Hi, everybody. My name is Elisa Kirschhofer. I am the marketing director with Idioma Education and Consulting, and I'm so excited to uh, present Dr. Francisco Javier Fuentes, who is going to be talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and his book, Las Cosas Diferentes, Things That Are Different. So I'm going to pass it off to Javier and let him um, tell us all about his book and how we can better um, integrate DEI strategies in our classroom. Um, thank you so much, Elisa. Um, I also want to thank you, the Yoma Education and Consulting. Um, as I've been working with you guys, you guys do a lot for us teachers and our kids. And so I want to thank you first foremost for what you do. And secondly, for giving me this opportunity to be a part of what you do. Um, so let me share, uh, let me click on the presentation here. A little bit about myself. Um, I have a PhD in uh, higher education. My studies are in, in critical ethnic studies, DEI. Um, and I've published a book, a children's book. My history, though, is uh, uh, I was a bilingual teacher uh, for many years, and I became a school principal working with bilingual education students, second language learners for many years. And then I was an area superintendent for a few years, and then I got burned out. Uh, and I decided to get my PhD so I can figure out what is wrong. We know that are wrong. There are many things that are that we need to better in our system, and education system. We know that the achievement gap hasn't closed as much as we hope to. Things like No Child Left Behind and Common Core uh, um, at many times have made it more difficult um, and sometimes increase the achievement gap. Um, but nonetheless, here we are. And so what I'm gonna talk about today is, I'm gonna reference my book in the process, but really is what do we do? How do we do, what strategies can we use in the elementary classroom? Um, I was sharing with Elisa before here that uh, back in the day when I was getting my master's many moons ago, um, it was in multicultural education. And we thought that the more you know about culture, the better teacher you would be as far as making your, uh, teaching more engaging with our multicultural students. Well, that's not necessarily the case because every student from every background has their own microculture from their individual families within their different ethnicity and nationalities. And so these are some strategies that I will be talking about that it's an awareness so you can be aware and start thinking in a way to help you be more engaging and promote diversity, equity, and inclusion in the classroom. All right, that's the cover of my book, by the way, and that's my daughter. My daughter is a protagonist in the story. Um, so what is DEI, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion? Uh, we're talking about making sure that our students feel accepted, that they're okay with their skin color, they're okay with their language identity, whether they have an accent or not, whether they know English well or not, whether they come from another country. It's making that sense of equity and inclusion in the classroom. Um, we also know that this movement, although the information I'm gonna talk about is years old, uh, um, we really haven't really hit the ground running until about five years ago with a social justice uh, movement. And so having said that, the first thing I must talk about is um, pre-strategies. And what we're talking about here is really creating a classroom environment where we make the students feel comfortable in the class. I'm not talking about being their buddy or the best friend. I'm talking about having a student-teacher relationship, a caring relationship where you know a little bit about each student. You can't know everything about all your students, impossible. You know the data, you know the testing data, but what do you know about their backgrounds? Do Are they in a sport after school? Are they in a club? Do they sing? You know, what do their parents do? Um, do they come from a single home family? All these little things you can get to know. I'm not talking about interviewing each student at the beginning of the school year, but these are things that you get to know about them throughout the first weeks of school. That in itself is what I call pre-strategies. Standing at the door. And a student walks in, calling them by the first name. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mario. Hi, Maria. And then asking them a little bit about what you know about them. Hi, Maria. How was your softball game after school yesterday? Fantastic. Sorry, couldn't make it. Um, as you know, I have a family. But please tell me you're playing next, and I want to know how you're doing. Mario, how's your mom feeling? 
Okay. I heard you, you had told me she was sick. Is she doing better? Those kinds of questions, what I call pre-strategies, that create that atmosphere in the classroom, that safety net, lowers the effective filter so students feel more comfortable, engaged. That's what I call pre-strategies, okay? Once we set that tone with our students on a daily basis, uh, then we can start talking about uh, um, Paulo Freire's liberatory spaces. You know, Paulo Freire is a famous author of Pedagogy of the Oppressed and other books and Luis Mole's Funds of Knowledge. And Luis Mole was one of my professors at the University of Arizona. But let's talk about Paulo Freire's Liberator Spaces. What Paulo Freire is saying here is, our students come to the classroom with knowledge. Ask them about where they're from and you'll get a geography lesson. Ask them about languages they speak and you'll get a language lesson. Ask them about how much math they know and you'll be surprised because they'll be proud to show you what they know. Once we use that information of the knowledge they bring into the classroom, this is what he calls about liberatory spaces, then we can connect the content, the common core standards, and adapt them to meet what the students have. In other words, use the student's background and knowledge as the platform to build on the new lessons that you're going to do. Switch your lessons so they talk about the knowledge that your students are bringing with them. That's what Paulo Freire is talking about. Secondly, we have Luis Mole's Funds of Knowledge. Luis Mole took Paulo Freire's knowledge and he specifically tailored it to Latino families. And what he did was uh, uh, people would look at data and Latino students and English language learner students and say, well, they don't care about families, don't care about the students' education. What he found out and what we all had a good notion of is they do, they value, in fact, education is the most things. The problem is, since we don't understand or know where this student comes from, their home, their background, their microculture in this country, um, and we don't use that, parents feel like they cannot help. If you ask students or parents, you know, do your parents help you with homework, the Latino families, they will say no. But if we create an environment where the parents are part of that homework and really change the homework to find out about using their parents' backgrounds to help them and be a part of the lesson, it goes tenfold. Students really get engaged and they get become extremely successful academically. And what we're talking about here is cultural and language identity. We want students to feel proud of who they are. One of the themes that I use when I teach my students um, at the university level is don't be ashamed of what makes you, you. Don't be ashamed of what makes you, you. Um, and, and that is key importance. Teaching them that Spanglish or code switching is, not a, is, is very appropriate. It's just an informal form of Spanish language and English language. So creating all these cultural and language identity lessons in the classroom promotes a student's sense of engagement, their own self-value, self-worth. Um, and you see a picture here of my daughter with Fatima, um, and I'll give a summary of, of my book at the end. But my book is called Las Cosas Diferentes, Things That Are Different. And what I mean about that and something that I teach with my university students and why I wrote the book is I want elementary students to be able to practice what I teach my higher ed students. It's very acceptable in higher ed, but when we start talking about DEI in the elementary classroom in many states and counties and districts, may be seen as a voodoo term or a, uh, how would I say this, conflict of interest term. Um, what I wanna do is create a story where DEI is front forward without having to label it anything. And so my story, Las Cosas Diferentes, encompasses Paulo Freire and Luis Mole's theories. And what the book does is mentions this, things that are different are not better, are not worse, they are just different. And we have to appreciate that somebody else likes that, prefers that, whether it's wearing a hijab, as in this case with Fatima in my book, um, and uh, or eating somebody's food. When you go to your neighbor's house and you eat rice for the first time and it doesn't taste like your mom's or your nana's rice or your, your grandmother's rice or your tata's rice or your dad's rice, your first thing you think is, wow, that's not good. 
Well, what I teach my students is, no, it's not good. It's not worse. It's just different. And somebody appreciates that. And you got to respect that. If we weren't to entail that message uh, of what I do in my book and my classrooms, um, if we were to entail that message since with our parents, since our kids are born in elementary school throughout life, and we encompass that we view things and analyze things with a notion of things that are different are not worse are not better they're just different and certain people appreciate that and prefer that if we grow that notion our world would be a better place believe me we wouldn't be having as many problems as we do um and we need to bring our people together and this is one way we can do it and so that's what my book does it promotes the story things that are different are not better are not worse, they're just different. And we have to appreciate that somebody prefers that. Um, here's a list of books, elementary school books, that are about DEI. And all these books encompass the message that I'm talking about. The difference with my book is mine is bilingual. And so it's in English and Spanish, a K3 book. But this is a list of books. And I think you do have, at least if I'm correct, they all have access to the PowerPoint, right? Sorry, I'm muted. Um, yes. Okay, great. So you'll have this list in the PowerPoint. This is a, a list of books that I like. One of the ones that I like is The the World Needs More Purple People. It's an excellent book. And all these books promote the concept, Las Cosas Diferentes, things that are different. And the concepts of Paulo Freire and Luis Mold's Funds of Knowledge. Um, so at this point, I will stop and uh, open it up to questions and or discussion. I I have a question. Yes, Ms. Elisa. Your, your daughter is the protagonist. Yes. Was this a conversation that you had with your daughter ahead of time? What was the genesis? I mean, I understand um, the the need, obviously, you you recognize the need, but did the genesis of this book also have something to do with your daughter? And is that why she's the protagonist? Um, I picked my daughter, well, because I love her. And my next book is based on my other daughter, not to worry. <laughs> um, it, it's just that I, I felt that she fit the, the bill for, for the character that I was talking about. But the story, I start the story with um, Menudo. I don't know if you're familiar with Menudo. Menudo is a... Oh, a, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's the Mexican popular Mexican breakfast soup, um, and we and I and I took this concept because this is how I introduce my concept of things that are different with the university students. I talk about menudo because most of my students are from the Southwest in Tucson, Arizona, and so it's, what's the first thing you felt when you tasted your neighbor's menudo or you went to a restaurant and you had menudo, and everybody makes a face like, Ugh, uh. and so. <laughs> And and so I use that concept. Uh, and in the story, we began with talking about Naima's talking, and she says, my mom makes the best menudo. And actually, she does. My wife, I'm a good cook. We're both good cooks. But her menudo is amazing. Uh -huh. And when we make menudo, the whole family comes over. And that's in the story. And uh, in Sonora, the northern state of Mexico, where we're from, menudo is white. But the rest of Mexico, the menudo is red and spicy. Oh. And so in the story, we go to a restaurant. My daughter orders menudo, and uh, it's red. And she tastes it, and she goes, Mom, I don't like it. It doesn't taste like yours. And then my wife tells her, Mijita, remember what I've always told you. Las cosas diferentes, things that are different, are not better or are not worse. They're different. And somebody likes that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be serving that menudo. You don't have to order it. You don't have to like it. But somebody else does. And so we need to respect that the fact that people like different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how the the, uh, the book starts, with that uh, storyline. And then it goes on to uh, Fatima. Uh, she comes from Saudi Arabia, and she's introduced to the classroom. The teacher says, please show her around, make her feel at home. And at recess time, uh, uh, the students are in the playground talking about because she has this hijab. Most students haven't seen a hijab, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're talking about it. And so Fatima sitting by herself, feeling lonely. So my daughter approaches her and sits next to her in the in recess time at the bench and says, As, hi, how are you? And then introduces herself and says, well, what is that um, that you wear on your head? And she goes, it's a hijab. It's part of my religion and my culture. Um, and most women wear it. 
Oh, I see. Okay. So they become friends and Fatima becomes friends and she, she feels better. Then the other friends ask Naima, um, so why were you talking to uh, Fatima? My daughter says, well, um, they asked about the hijab and my daughter says, it's part of the culture. And then my daughter says, remember, uh, 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 things that are different are not better on it. Or is it different? We have to appreciate those differences. Somebody likes that. So after that, they all became friends. They're playing soccer. Uh, a few uh, later, in another recess time, the teacher's eating tamales. Mm -hmm. And she tamales at recess time while she's supervising the kids. And it's so spicy, her face gets beat red. <laughs> That's perfect. She, <laughs> makes a, she makes a comment because uh, our tamales that are very spicy. Mm -hmm. And she makes a comment, oh my God, who made this? You can't eat this. This is terrible. And then the students all stop. No, teacher, no. And all in unison say, remember, teacher, things that are different are not worse, are not better. They're just different. Mm -hmm. We have to know that somebody, and we, and we, and we and we have to appreciate those differences. And all the students and the teacher starts to laugh. And that's how the book ends. I love it. And so uh, it's a wonderful message. And mm -hmm. a wonderful story. And it's stories like these that we, if we use them constantly, it creates that natural talk without having to say, you know, uh, uh, um, DEI or anything like that. It's just a natural way of teaching uh, 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 and teaching lessons that are DEI, again, without calling a DEI curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, because unfortunately, elementary parents, you know, get scared. Well, critical race theory. Ah, uh, um, um, we can teach all these things without calling it CRT. Um, they're just good stories. And and I don't know of a parent, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, that wouldn't appreciate the story. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, really important right now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very important, especially. Um, and so that that is in a nutshell. Uh, DEI in the elementary classroom. It's a very general, without going to specifics. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm more than well. I'm more than happy to come back and get into specifics uh, mm -hmm. and, and 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 go forward with that. Uh, I wonder if and 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 Guyan has a uh, a question and or a comment. Maybe not right now. We can check in again at the end. Okay, great. Um, other things that I, uh, uh, I'd i like to mention um, is aside from using stories and promoting reading, et cetera, et cetera, uh, um, we also forget to ask children, what do you think? And have them speak what they think. We come from this autocratic, Western Eurocentric educational system where we ask questions after we teach and we check for understanding and comprehension. Without understanding, there are many different uh, indigenous cultures who work differently. And so understanding that that the way we teach and we in teachers college, checking for understanding doesn't work with all students um, and allowing that safe space for students to generate and participate and demonstrate uh, competency or mastery of the at their own time. Uh, case in point, uh, in the Athabasca culture um, in Canada, a native indigenous culture, uh, young teacher went to cook college, says, you know what, I really want to work and go out there in the boonies um, and take my, and want to help out teaching uh, uh, be a teacher and really learn about these people and learn, be part of their culture, et cetera, et cetera. So he came and he taught. And for the whole first week, he would ask questions and the students would just look at him. For the whole week, he would ask questions and he would come home frustrated to his wife. I teach, I plan, I did everything I learned in college and my student teaching and they're not responding. I don't know if they understand what I'm doing. Well, the students were going home and says, Mom, Dad, this guy's not very smart. He's asking us questions when he knows the answers. In, the, in, in some indigenous cultures, the elder demonstrates models, whatever the lesson is. The youngster watches and watches 
never has any questions asked. When the student is ready, they then demonstrate. And that's how teaching and learning happens in some indigenous cultures. So the concept of things that are different also applies to teaching methods. You know, we have to get away with the fact that these are best practices. They're not. So these are some practices that work with mo many students, but there are other practices that we cannot be afraid to employ. One of them is just talk. Don't ask questions. Um, and after a certain time, students will respond and generate, and you'll be surprised. But I get a kick out of the kids going home and says, he's not so smart, mom. He keeps on asking us the questions when he's a teacher. He's supposed to know the answers. I think Nguyen had something in the chat. Did you see that? Yes. Um, takeaways from the meeting. So this is um, uh, share the recording of the presentation in PowerPoint with Dr. Fuentes on the Idioma Education YouTube channel. Yep. I'm going to do all those things. Great, great. Definitely. Uh, and so those are just some of the concepts that uh, uh, that we need to keep in mind because you you what you think is a great lesson you may have to alter and how do you do that sometimes as especially the, the students get older says I've got this this is what I want you guys to learn what do you think to think the best way to practice this you'll be surprised yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> and in, in, in Massachusetts and in, in New Hampshire, we're really in the, on the East Coast over here. This is where where we do a lot of our work and where I've taught in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. So much focus on student voice and choice and involving the students in what it is that we're learning about. So maybe we've got a, a unit about hobbies and you know, I taught Spanish one and then I taught all levels of French. And we have any kind of a unit on hobbies and what kids like to do, involving the students in that vocabulary and helping to build those lists and build those conversations is so important. Yeah, I I have a great example. Uh, I I did a consulting and professional development for a long time, and I had a teacher comment on on one of their success stories, and he says, "I was doing a lesson on measurement." Common Core Math Center, blah, 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 blah. So I asked the students, so we need to learn how to measure both inches and centimeters and see and compare the differences, right? Yeah. Whatever the standard was. So I asked the students, how do you guys want to learn this? Hey, teacher, you know what's a nice day? Why don't we, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. Let's go outside and take the tape measure and measure things. Right. Okay. Yeah. Went outside. <laughs> Those students learned more that day than they would have in the classroom listening to a teacher. Um, a lot of people, uh, uh, um, you know, I remember back in the day when I was a school principal I says, well, you only show them 15 minutes of the movie and then to get your point across because you know, they need to spend spend time uh, with uh, rigor. Uh, says, well, a movie can be rigor if you stop and talk about in between before the next segment. You stop it at a good moment, you compare it to what you're learning, the concept, literacy, um, language arts and connect it and says and ask the students. Sometimes you ask students, tell me when you want me to stop it. Yeah. And and they'll stop it and says, you know what? I think they're talking about uh plot. And this is part of the plot. Yeah. That's great. Who can wants to expand on that? Um so so this is what what uh, Paulo Freire and, and, and Luis Bo is talking about. Uh, uh, uh is bringing the knowledge that they have into this classroom becoming a facilitator, hmm. right? not an autocratic teacher, but a facilitator. Uh, we talk about it, but what does it look like? Well, it's simply as, what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. A little more complex than that, but that's the notion. Well, and what's, I mean, what's one of the best ways that you can access critical thinking is by asking questions mm -hmm. and getting the students to get curious about their own learning. And students, what we're finding now in working with districts and in, in having so many conversations and such access to teachers and in our role here with idioma is the students right now um are really interested in what's going to be useful to them yes so since students aren't interested in our, our kids right now aren't interested in just sitting back and sort of taking whatever it is that we have to offer they're curious they want to know about things that apply to them. They want to be useful. They want to make a difference. They, they, 
want to be involved in their own learning process. And so the more opportunities that we have to thoughtfully engage them, I think yeah. it's really um, knowing, Yeah, knowing how to use social media on our secondary mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. that is key. Uh, uh, they'll teach you a lesson or two on how to do it. Um, <laughs> yes. If you give them that platform to demonstrate what they know, you'll be shocked and surprised. Yep. Um, and they feel such a sense of pride when they're yes. able to show us them. Yeah. Yep. My daughter is like, well, math, she hates math because she, you know, she struggles with math. But, uh, um, you know, I'm trying to talk to the teacher and says, make it, make it a useful real life application yeah. and she will learn. Yeah. Was, you know, listening to some crazy parent by themselves and might not do it, <laughs> but I'm not stopping, you know, I'm not stopping. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's so many things that we can do and it's happening. Like I said, about five, six years ago, we started taking off with this DEI. We've talked about it. Paulo Freire has been around for years. Luis Moll has been around for years and other uh, theorists and practitioners. Um, but we're really putting into practice now. And I think we're beginning to see a difference. Yeah. I really do. I really do. Uh, um, well, I so appreciate how interested our gener our next generation. So your daughter, who is, is she in high school? Yeah, she's going to be a senior next year. Oh, great. Yeah. And, and my son is going into middle school next year. And, and these kids that are so interested, they're not apathetic learners. They're very engaged learners. Um, I think it's a wonderful thing. I think we're going to see some really cool things from these yeah. kids coming up for sure. Yeah. Um, it's 30 minutes. I thank you so much, Elisa. Um, and uh, and Gwen, I hope you appreciate it. Uh, please pass, you know, share the PowerPoint, share the information, share the book and the list of books that I provided you and, 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 and they will go a long way. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll come back here and do another follow up and uh, hopefully you come back and bring others with you. Yes, yeah, we'd love to have you back. We're um, super excited for our summer courses to start. July 8th is our next session of summer instructor facilitated courses. So if you're looking for some graduate level credit or professional development hours, we're happy to help with those. And yeah, moving forward, we would love to invite Javier back to speak about, well, certainly your next book, but maybe what else we can do with DEI and how to make this ex more accessible and, and less feeling like something extra to do and more like what I appreciate about what you've just presented to us is this is so much a part of what we're doing anyway. It's yeah, not something it's extra, it's integrated already. So yes. thanks for um, calling attention to that and making us more mindful. Yeah, and we'd love to have you back. Thanks Absolutely. everybody for joining us and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.